you want to clap for me? <laughs> Sound lock. What is an ensemble story? It usually consists of four or more central characters. Sometimes there is still one clear protagonist, other times there is not. Sometimes the character importance is distributed with a hierarchy, other times it's not. In part one we looked at ensemble form and character introductions. Part two is all about character importance and interpersonal conflict. Wow! Avoid the clap, Jenny Dugan. <gasps> wow! That's good advice! So what is another expectation of the ensemble story? Character importance. Ensemble stories work best if the importance of your central characters is staggered. If you make four or more central characters perfectly equal, then it can be challenging for the audience to bond with any of them. And it's emotionally exhausting to deep dive into that many lives in such a short time. You run the risk of your story lacking dynamic and meaning. Huh, that's not what we want. So character importance is all about finding a satisfying way to split the audience's attention. JC, how do you do that? Create a hierarchical structure of the central characters, of course. To find the current hierarchy of your characters, look at character point of view, how much they reveal about the common goal, conflict or theme, character growth, how much their arc drives the common goal, conflict or theme, and of course, screen time. This hierarchy does not look the same for every ensemble story, nor should it. It's about finding the right balance unique to your characters, which will best serve the story you wish to tell. Some examples of hierarchical structure of central characters might look like this. Protagonist structure. One character undergoes the most significant transformation out of all the central characters with smaller arcs. Dual protagonist structure. Two or three characters undergo equally important transformations alongside other central characters with smaller arcs. Cast structure. Four or more characters have equally important transformations alongside other central characters with smaller arcs. Go ahead, play around with your central characters to find the best balance. You never know, you might find a cool option you didn't even know existed. What does character importance look like in Steel Magnolias and A League of Their Own? The character importance in Steel Magnolias looks like this. Cast structure. So keeping in mind point of view, growth and screen time, Malin is the most important followed by Shelby. Truvy and Weezer have the next most crucial transformations, and then Annelle and Clary with smaller arcs. Let's take a look at how the character importance shows through, even in a scene when they are all together. And I think we can trust the nail here to do that. Honey, her quaff your cards in that little box on the counter. Oh, I don't know. Today is a very special day and my work tends to too be poopy too poopy when I'm nervous. You stop that. You're a professional now, so just get over there and bang some hair. I love that, that she's like, nope, you can do it. I just like the idea of growing old with somebody. I love that the fact that this is the first time they're all together, apart from Weezer, but we're getting to see the reactions of them listening to each other because it shows us where the conflict is. Yeah. Of course, I know now I was suffering from premenstrual syndrome. And you can tell they're very familiar and very comfortable with each other. Shelby, I hope you and Jackson be as happy as Lord and I where we had such a good time. We're learning so much about them as mm. well. And it doesn't feel forced. It just feels very natural. What are your colors, Shelby? They're blush and bash. Ooh, Her colors, colors are, are pink, pink and, and pink. pink. But the bridesmaids' dresses are the hideous. Look at these dresses. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, they look like Bo Peeps. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> hideous. <laughs> Mama, I wish you'd get off Daddy's back. Shelby, look, now I don't really want to Fill get us in. in on the reception. I love how she's like, yep, let's diffuse this tension. Oh, but the making up can be so romantic. I love seeing all their different views on love. Mm -hmm. The groom's cake hidden in the carport. Shelby and I, we agree on one thing. The, the groom's, groom's cake. It's awful. <laughs> it's awful. It's repulsive. <laughs> 
it's so great that we do get to see them agree on something. Yes. Because then we get to see all the fun and love yes. between them. See how they show us the importance of the characters in what is revealed, how it's revealed, and who it's revealed to. Can you apply this to your ensemble story? Now the character importance in a league of their own looks like this. Dual protagonist structure. Dottie and Kit undergo equally important transformations closely followed by Jimmy. Marla, Doris and May have smaller arcs. Let's look at how the character important shows through individually for some of the central characters. I'll tell you what I'll miss. What? I'll miss you, Kit. I love you, Kit. Really? Just shows you. She's never heard it before. And how much she wanted that validation from Dottie. Thank you for getting me into the league, Dad. <laughs> you got yourself in the league. I got you on the train. Mm. Good answer. Now you start using your head. That's not love that's three feet above your ass. There's no crying in baseball. It's obvious that he's trying to manage them the way that he was managed. Because there's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball! Seems like a very inconsequential scene, but it just shows his character arc when later on, when they find out the terrible news that one of the ball player's husbands has passed, he is able to hold space for those tears. Come on! Still missing the cutoff man. Now that, that, that's something that I would like you to work on <laughs> before next season. And this scene shows how much he has grown. Alright, thanks. He's like basically having conniption. He's like, oh my god. <laughs> Is this your boyfriend? He's out of work and he treats me bad. <laughs> None of the other boys ever uh, always made me feel like I was wrong, you know? Like I was some sort of a weird girl or a strange girl. Or, well, not even a girl, just because I could play. Hmm. I believed him too, but not anymore, you know? I think we're all all right. Don't give me that. <gasps> Because she's one of our key ensemble players, that's part of her character growth and her character arc. Because when we first met her, she was very, I'm going to make everyone laugh, I'm going to entertain the group. When you see that scene, it's like, oh, maybe she was insecure and she felt like she had to put on a show to be liked. You might be that one person in your hometown that plays ball and you get teased, but then you go out into the wider world and you find all those other one people and you realise you're not as different. Unusual as, as yeah, society tries to make you believe. You're not an anomaly. Yeah, well, where is she? Baby? <laughs> just to be of you. <laughs> Not that we just gave her a dress and a lot of liquor. Bitch had to be you. Because she was the third character we met mm. in the team, it makes sense that she would have one of the biggest arcs. So this scene is obviously developing that. Come on, we gotta go. I sing it to Nelson. Nelson. Ain't I, baby? You sure are. Be blue. Ain't he something? <laughs> He's like, take her already. So comparing Doris's arc with Marla's arc, they are actually very similar thematically. Yes. 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 Hot tip. Plotting your characters out like this will show you how many pieces of the puzzle you have and if they have truly earned a place in your story. Sometimes you may realise you can demote a central character to a supporting one as they don't warrant their own point of view. Sometimes you may even decide to fold two central characters into one as they bring a similar perspective to the story or share a similar stake or goal. For my mash, I will take inspiration from... What is another expectation for an ensemble? Interpersonal conflict. It is a conflict that refers to any type of opposition involving two or more people. But within ensemble stories, we also want to look at these two things. ABC conflict and unlikely pairings. ABC conflict is a fun way to categorize interpersonal conflict. The juiciest and most relevant interpersonal conflict becomes A. The second B, the third 
third, C, and so on. Now it is easier to determine the amount of screen time needed to have a satisfying journey and resolution for each interpersonal conflict. What does the ABC conflict look like in Steel Magnolias? The A interpersonal conflict is between Malin and Shelby. I'm pregnant. Congratulations. Mm. You can see it from both perspectives. Shelby wants her mum to be happy for her and Malin's just scared. So you've got to set it up so we understand everyone's perspective. So when it gets to scenes like this, as an audience member, you're so torn on which side to be on. Not that you necessarily need to be on a side. No. But it's just that emotional punch to the gut. When you first watch this film, I don't think you really realise how bad it's going to be for Shelby. You think, yeah, well, diabetics have healthy babies all the time. I would rather have 30 minutes of wonderful than a lifetime of nothing special. Oh, that's such a heartbreaking line. Because 30 minutes is not a long time. <laughs> no. I do like that in that scene, Shelby stands out for herself and almost seems like the adult in this situation. Because mother and daughter, it's almost like their roles are reversed. Malin's almost chucking a tantrum. Absolutely. But you can understand why the further we get into the film. I'd say Malin and Shelby are the generational differences, but also family. The B interpersonal conflict is between Clary and Louisa. My car's parked over there. Oh, I want to This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. You're just only a Will few feet away me? from here. Follow me. <laughs> Good Jackson, like a child. You know that? The child. older you get, the sillier you get. The older you get, the uglier you get. <laughs> Clary and Weezer are the experience because they're the oldest. They've been through multiple marriages and things like that. So they've got all this outside perspective to bring to the group. The C interpersonal conflict is between Truvy and Anel. Well, I have a strict philosophy that I have stuck to for 15 years. There is no such thing as natural beauty. There is no such thing as, as natural, natural beauty. beauty. Truvy's the centre of it, essentially, because her salon is where everything happens and then Arnell's the new set of eyes, the fresh set of eyes, the existing versus the new. The D interpersonal conflict is between Truvy and Spud. I thought I'd come with you to the funeral if you don't mind. I don't mind. I feel sorry for him, you know, especially Jackson. Losing Shelby like that. Something like that ever happened to me, I don't know. You appreciate her. <laughs> Finally, my goodness. What the hell is this for? It makes you pretty. It's like he can't be vulnerable for too long, mm. you know. But at least he asked her a question. Mm. And he listened to the answer. The E interpersonal conflict is between Weezer and Drum. Damn it! I just saw Drum eating in this morning at the Piggly Wiggly and I smiled at the son of a bitch for I could help myself. <laughs> Couldn't help smiling at Drum because obviously she knows what he's been through. The F interpersonal conflict is between Anel and Sammy. Here's the best cherry coke in the history of the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here grinning me like, this is so foul. <laughs> you can see that they're establishing it being like, ooh, love interest. Another hot tip. Doing this exercise shows you when, where, and how you can step away from your central characters. And which character has the most at stake in every scene. And which character might be the most equipped to tell this particular part of the story. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Another tool to utilize within the ABC conflict is the power of mirroring. This is when you use one character's journey to push and pull against the other character you have paired them with. A powerful example of this is in A League of Their Own between Dottie and Jimmy. I, I gave away five years at the end of my career to drinking. Five years. And now there isn't anything I wouldn't give to get back any one day of it. But sneaking out like this, quitting, you regret it for the rest of your life. What's so interesting is that without her character arc, his character arc wouldn't work. She needs to be in this place of uncertainty for him to actually... Feel certain. Yes. And she was the first one to garner his respect, and that's why he thinks so highly of her and values her opinion and is so disappointed that she's not seeing through. It's like a mirror. Mm. Can you make your A conflict mirror each other? What about your B, even your C? What about unlikely pairings?
This is when you throw two characters together in a scene that exists outside of the ABC conflict. Why? Because it usually adds something unique and indispensable to the larger goal, conflict or theme. Shelby loves you very much. I hope so. It cost me 60 bucks to rent this sucker. When you watch the film and then you watch this scene back, you get really annoyed with Jackson because he doesn't really understand. He doesn't really grasp the enormity of Shelby's condition. Promise me you'll think about it before you make any big decisions about family. Milan, I know what you're saying. No, you don't. <laughs> yes, Anel, I pray. <laughs> I have suspected this all along. <laughs> oh, well, don't you expect me to come to one of your churches? They'd probably make me eat a live chicken. <laughs> Not on your first visit. Very good, <laughs> Anel. Spoken like a true smart ass. <laughs> and I think that's just like, ooh, respect. Considering the first time we saw Anel and Weezer together when Anel ran away because she was <laughs> so scared to then call back at her. Especially like that move in the fifth inning when you scratched your balls for an hour. Well, anything worth doing is worth doing right. Oh, I hate how they spit. Now, Jimmy, you have some pretty good ball players here. If you want to give them a little bit of your ball players, I haven't got ball players. I've got girls. Uh, I think that was an mm -hmm. interesting way of having very different points of view. Put together mm, someone to who cares a lot yeah and someone who doesn't care at all exactly but it still pushes the story along and gra gra grabbed grabbed milky white may what are you giving her to read oh what difference does it make she's reading okay that's the important thing now go away go shoot shoot because you've got the character who can't read and the character who obviously likes smart. You generate this really sweet mm. moment between two characters. Breath. It gets really good. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, kid? You too big to finish your own games now? <laughs> oh, kid. <laughs> It makes sense it would be Kit and Doris fighting though, just mm. based on everything we've seen about their characters and their character arcs. <laughs> the beautiful thing about ensemble movies is that you've got all these interesting different characters so you want to throw them together in the mm. most iconic and unique ways. Another tool to utilise within unlikely pairings is the power of juxtaposition. Rather than putting the pair in a scene together, you put them in scenes side by side. This way you can say something greater about the common goal, conflict or theme. Here's an example. <coughs> no, it's cut. Where is that? <laughs> Use your head. That's that lump three feet above our ass, right, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> I got a telegram from one of you ladies from the War Department. Oh my God, honey. Let's see. Uh-oh. The least the army could do is send someone personally tell your husband's dead. How insensitive. I know. Just give me the telegram. I can't. I don't have a name on the checklist. Just give me the telegram. This is official. This is from the War Department. Come on. I think after this moment, they actually respect him. Whereas before, like, Doris making that joke, there wasn't the full mm. support and respect. Whereas after this moment, they definitely do. Sorry, buddy. No, <laughs> See, there is crying in baseball. <laughs> All right, come on, come on. We still got a game to play. Oh, how awful! I know, but it's true. <laughs> Discharged. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. 
He feels so mean that Betty's husband has died and now her husband's home. But that's why it's so powerful, because we see the juxtaposition of two characters. I think it's about friendships, the importance of having friends, particularly at a time when your brother's husbands and fathers fathers are off at war. Play with your ensemble. Mix and match until you find a pair that says something interesting and unique about your overall story. You won't regret it. For my mash, I will take inspiration from... Until the next smash. Bye. I forget how uncomfortable this is. <laughs> My eyes is already like. <laughs> when did wearing hats become like? Not like, a Yeah. <laughs> We're having some technical difficulties. Being my brain. <laughs> Do I have to repeat all that again? <laughs> yes. You'll talk about uncomfortable when you're nine months pregnant, okay? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> you stink. You're gonna. He's such a brat that we don't care. Yeah, I know. We're like, oh, thank God he hit him. (laughs)